common issue that I've seen is that there's a lot of confusion about what the terms verification and validation mean. And a lot of times they're used interchangeably. Um, so I guess just to start out, can you give a, a brief definition of, of what those two terms mean for simulation governance? Okay. Uh, that's a good place to start because I agree with you, Greg, that it is, uh, uh, th these terms mean different things in different settings. In the computational simulation world, uh, verification deals with the issues of numerical solution, reliability, accuracy, entirely dealing with the issue of the solution of the mathematical model. And validation deals with the issue of how well do the model results compared to usually experimental measurements or experimental observations. So those are two completely different issues. Verification has two parts to it. Code verification, which deals with the testing of the software itself. And then solution verification deals with the actual quantification of the numerical simulation error. And in validation, we always try to compare where we have data and that deals with physics issues, uh, comparison with reality. Um, now we're using commercial software. We're, we're paying thousands of dollars or euros per seat on that software. So isn't verification part of their responsibility? Why, why do I need to be worried about that myself? Yeah, that, that's a very common question. And I think um, every organization is asking that question because these licenses for commercial software are, uh, they're, they're relatively expensive and they need to produce uh, results for the uh, company that uh, buys these. Uh, the code companies, the software companies, they do a lot of verification testing. Their emphasis is on two parts. One of them is called regression testing, testing on different operating systems, uh, comparison with different regression suites and uh, also version control. And then the other aspect has to do with what we call code verification in the sense of comparing numerical solutions with very accurate independent solutions. These are usually analytical solutions to the mathematical model. And our mathematical models are usually differential equations, but they can be integral equations, either ordinary differential equations or partial differential equations. So that testing is uh, the primary responsibility of the software company. But as we found as simulation is uh, increased in how widely it's used, the code verification testing in terms of accuracy compared to analytical solutions uh, has not been as robust as what we have, uh, what, what we're actually doing in many cases. So that's an area that uh, needs to be improved on the software side. And also sometimes it's appropriate for the organization that buys the license to do their own code verification testing. And how much should be done should be uh, dependent on uh, what the goals of the simulation are in your own company. Okay. And maybe just an additional comment to that one here is, it's really all about, you are still responsible for your simulation result. It's not a simulation software provider. So that's why it's good to understand what your software actually is doing and do the verification yourself. So. And so if I understood correctly, some of the code verification is making sure that the code tells me two plus two equals four and that the software companies generally are handling that well, but the responsibility around the solution verification is where additional effort is needed, particularly by the end user. Is that uh, a fair statement? I, I don't think that's quite right. There, there's two aspects of code verification. One of them is usually called regression testing, and those are consistency checks and testing on different operating systems and, and that sort of thing. But the other issue in code verification is the issue of the accuracy of the numerical solution to the mathematical model. You use the example of two plus two, but the, the, the real world that we live in is that these mathematical models are extremely complicated models. That is the mathematics, it's a calculus problem, always is a calculus problem. 
And we have these mathematical models, which are extraordinarily powerful. And the testing of all of those solutions for different boundary conditions, initial conditions, material properties, that's what has to be also tested by the software company, as well as what Alex said, you have to be certain that the accuracy of those solutions from a reliability compared to analytical solutions is adequate. And that testing is separate from the solution verification, which is an error estimation problem. And that's a different, that's a different issue. In solution verification, you don't have analytical solutions to the problems. Those are typically what we call the application of interest or the intended use. So maybe that helps. So uh, on the topic of validation, um, you know, I can understand why uh, an end user needs to validate. I think that ties into the, the old adage about, you know, garbage in, garbage out mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Um, so in my work, uh, say, you know, uh, uh, all of my design work is going to be subject to final approval via physical testing. So in that case, is, is validation a necessity for me? Wouldn't that just really be a risk reduction activity? It can be thought of in terms of risk reduction, but um, people need to realize the capability of modeling simulation and is being able with the computers that we have and the software. Uh, for example, if you take linear elasticity theory, um, when you uh, for first learning linear elasticity, you don't really appreciate the power of those equations. It is just unbelievable that there's actually an infinite number of solutions to the linear elasticity problems. So every linear elasticity problem that has ever existed and will ever exist in the future, that set of software is supposed to be able to compute that solution accurately. And so what we want to do in the validation activity is to compare those simulation results, whether it's uh, linear elasticity or fluid mechanics, laminar flow, turbulent flow, reactive flow, with the experimental measurements that we have. Because in every mathematical model, you have approximations and assumptions that are built into the model itself. And once you make those, for example, if you go from the general field of continuum mechanics down to linear elasticity, there are a tremendous number of assumptions that get you to that point. And maybe those assumptions are not valid for your actual application. So that's why we have to do comparison with experiment. And so when you're talking about uh, assumptions there, yeah, you're talking not only about the assumption I'm making that a specific support type or constraint is appropriate, but assumptions inherent to the, the numerical implementation of, of how we've chosen to represent the system. Yes, and they're, they're, they're actually two parts of, of assumptions. One of them is the assumption in the formulation of, let's just use linear elasticity, homogeneous uniform materials. Uh, all of those assumptions are built into the equations themselves. But then as you say, there are also many set of, uh, there are a completely different set of equations that deal with the boundary conditions and excitation of the system itself, material properties. Those are all additional pieces of information. Okay. Yeah, so I think some of that is we're cognizant when I click on a boundary condition, I'm making an assumption there, but sometimes I forget about the assumptions that were uh, inherent in choosing a, a linear elastic model over some other model or so forth, so. That's a really good example. Modern software packages, um, uh, you know, a lot of young people have grown around, grown up around these. I grew up where, where we had to make our own packages, essentially, of every simulation we had. So the ability to switch from, let's say, a linear elasticity model to a plasticity model is just a click of a button. But you have completely changed your mathematical model in the assumptions and approximation that you make. But people don't really think about how powerful these packages are. So, you know, say in an organization, I've been using uh, simulation, or our organization's been using simulation successfully for decades, and without a formal uh, V and V type system, um, how do I justify to to my boss that we need to go through that level of effort? Doesn't kind of doesn't our past success speak for itself that that we're adequate there? Uh, 
that, that's a reasonable argument, but what we continue to do with simulation is that we move to uh, more complex problems. Uh, it can be either in, let's say, moving from laminar flow to turbulent flow, or turbulent non-reacting flow to reacting or multi-phase flow. We continually improve the uh, application space where we apply these models. And so as we apply them over many different types of situations, we can't assume that any of our new solutions are as reliable as the old ones because every time, even if you stay with a given mathematical model, let's say linear elasticity, every time you change the loading condition, the boundary conditions, you change from uniaxial loading to triaxial loading, every time you change the mathematical model in terms of its boundary conditions and you get a different load structure, different stress structure, strain structure. And so every one of those is different. So that's the kind of thing that we have to always be testing relative to validation experiments, how well our simulations compare with the real world. You need to also know how good you are. You're not sitting in a, in a, in a constant space. And just for example, through Moore's law, in five years time, your computer's are gonna be 10 times faster and cost half as much. And when your organization comes along and says, can we take prototypes out of our development process? That's when you need to really know how good is your simulation. You can't just rely on the fact that we've used it in the past. And so getting to the verification uh, and the validation especially will allow you to make those kinds of decisions to improve your processes.